So uh, Tamara, let's just start out with, uh, just tell us a little bit uh, about who you are, where you live, what you do, um, where you practice. Well, I'm Tamara Thompson. I'm a consultant pharmacist and my main job is long-term care consulting for Omnicare of Colorado. That re right, what is it? requires me to go into um, long-term care facilities that I help and review charts for patients, work with physicians, make sure the facilities are making, um, not the right word, is doing correct as far as med passes and storage of medications and use of meds and communicating with families and physicians. Um, I've been doing that since 2009, so 11 years now, mm -hmm. and I really enjoy it. Prior to that, um, I worked a little bit of everything. My journey started in Chicago where I obtained my PharmD, and then I went to the University of Maryland in Baltimore and completed a residency that us pharmacists used to call pharmacy practice. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Seattle, Washington and completed a family practice residency with the University of Washington. Mm -hmm. After that, I was recruited by the University of Wyoming to be a professor for the School of Pharmacy. And my main practice site was with the family practice residency in Cheyenne. Mm -hmm. So my site was clinical. I worked with, with physicians. I would have pharmacy students and I also lectured at the School of Pharmacy. That is where I met Dr. Sean Thompson. Mm -hmm. that, and my journey took me to Fort Morgan, Colorado, mm -hmm. where I live now. And Sean is a practicing family physician, and I am currently doing the long-term care consulting. Yeah. I, we've probably made this connection before. You know, I graduated from the Abraham Lincoln School of Medicine. Yes, I remember yeah. talking about that. I, I had forgotten that, uh, about you, that you had this Illinois <laughs> connection. Um, okay, so... Um, the obvious question is, how has your job changed in the face of this pandemic? As long-term care consultants, we are not considered essential enough to go into the building every month anymore. And what has allowed that to happen is electronic medical records. We are able to review charts, review new orders, physician notes, labs, all from home or distance. Mm -hmm. So as far as meeting regulations and having our charts reviewed, we're able to do that from home. Personally, I don't like it because I like my practice and I like seeing the residents and I like working with the nurses and spending that time there because you really get a better feeling of what's going on with, my, with the patients. And you know, it's very different to be sitting at a nurse's station and talking with them about how someone's feeling or acting than it is being at home and reading a progress note or whatever yeah. kind of note they do. So that part is limiting. I feel I'm more of a chart jockey right now where mm -hmm. I'm just looking at charts and I'm not looking at patients. And mm -hmm. to me, that's different. Yes. Are you doing any uh, video conferencing with staff or with medical staff or? I have not. I think some of my colleagues may have. Today I sat in on a meeting, their quality copy meeting, their monthly meeting, and then their psychotropic med review for a facility, but it was just audio. I was just mm -hmm. on speakerphone. Mm -hmm. So you just, you feel like you don't have nearly as good a handle on, <clears throat> on what's happening, having just, just data, just what's in the, in mm -hmm. the EMR. I think we all know medicine is so much more than data. So of the practice of it, so yes, that way I do feel limited. Um, with the, uh, do you use several different medical records? I've been lucky with the three facilities I do on a regular basis are different owners, but they all use point point care. Uh -huh. So I've, I've only had to master one EMR basically. And how do you feel about, about that record? In what way? Well, um, certainly the, frustra the frustration that, that, care that, that people who are on the front lines feel is just what you've expressed, which is um, it's data, data, data. A lot is entered as checklists rather than the stories that, that um, you know, even if it's just in the record rather than face to face, but the stories that, that tell you more about what's really happening or, or what's important. Um, do you feel that the records you're using 
do like an okay job at that or is it completely lacking? I'd say on some events, it's it's thorough, such as if a resident falls, the way mm -hmm. they, doc, you know, the facility documents what happened, what maybe triggered the fall, or so forth. But in other areas, it's vague and can't help me make a medical decision, such as if they say a resident had a behavior. Here's an example. Um, someone got, we just on the psych meeting today, they got marked and coded as a behavior affecting others but the resident woke up screaming from a nightmare and crying. But the way they coded it into the EMR, it's triggering for that. Mm -hmm. And that really wasn't what happened. They woke up crying and it did upset the resident, but no one else. So I don't know if that makes sense. So, so how, did you, find, box, how yeah. did you find that out then? What had really the, happened? The verbal, because I was on the phone with them and we discussed that resident and the nurse I chimed see. in and said this was an overnight she woke up with a nightmare, was crying, and then the way the, um, the CNA entered it into their database, it ended up being a behavior that affected others, mm -hmm. which as you know, could be a check marker, you know, then you start worrying about aggressive behaviors or something going on. So mm -hmm. again, if I, weren't on, I wasn't on that call, I would just be seeing she's had an increased behavior a couple of nights, mm -hmm. you know, which is different. Yeah. So. It sounds like it's, it, hang on just a second. It sounds like it's pretty hard to, um, there, are there, there are different challenges to doing your job now. Yes. How, <clears throat> how about satisfactions? Um, are you still mm -hmm. getting some of the, you know, uh, flavor or um, just uh, rewards doing this job? Um, not as many. I'm not seeing the residents and speaking with them. And that's where I feel as if I do more than just monitoring charts. When I can talk to a resident and see how they're actually feeling or talk to a family member, or which I guess is even the family members now are not in the loop. So mm -hmm. from that perspective, but another area where I do feel more satisfaction is I we're forced to communicate more as far as myself and administrators and the director of nursing. Mm -hmm. You kind of walk by the door and say hello and talk when you're there. Now it's more um, pinpoint discussion and what can I help you with? What do you need? So that may be evolving to a positive as far as that satisfaction and I feel like I've been able to help a little more on I'm always the headache of insurance claims but mm -hmm. I've been doing a little more of that having feet to be home and to see more of this that cycle versus do more history and try to make it work for insurance and prior ops and that type of stuff which has minimal satisfaction but if it takes a headache out of my facilities administrators I'll do it yes um so how, what, how, what's helping you to, to, we people who are in healthcare, you know, we get so much back from the interactions we have with, with uh, people, uh, mm -hmm. with patients and with staff and colleagues. Um, that is greatly diminished now. Um, how are you compensating? Are, are you able to compensate for that in some ways? How are you holding up? Okay, um, compensating. Not really. <laughs> um, I, I normally do work three days a week out of the house. So my facility visits are maybe seven to eight a month. So I'm not mm -hmm. daily with that. So maybe it's not mm -hmm. as much of a withdrawal than other people might have. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's still the withdrawal and missing it. Some texting to some of the like, social service directors and so forth. And mm -hmm. that helps. Um, personally, I created 14 signs for yards for the seniors and my son is graduating with. <laughs> uh -huh. So there's and we're gonna go deliver them, but we got six inches of snow, so I think we'll do that tomorrow. <laughs> but, <laughs> so that was a nice creative outlet to do positive uh -huh. satisfaction, still serving others, not necessarily uh -huh. as a pharmacist, but that was something I took on. Um, uh -huh. Little do, yeah. I mean, I, I'm a helper, so I like helping. 
been helping out um, my in-laws who are both over 80 and they're actually somewhat admitting they could use some help. So oh, I've done their shopping. That's something. <laughs> that was a big break. <laughs> <Yeah>, yes. <laughs> but so those types of things. And my son's like obviously home now. So we've had more conversations and having lunch together with him has filled the void too because that doesn't happen. He's in school four days a week normally. So uh -huh. yeah our Friday routine, but it's like every day is Friday now. Yeah. There's other things picking up. I'm blessed to be able to have those opportunities. So mm -hmm. I think I'm emotionally pretty, pretty all right. I mean, confused as everybody yeah. else is, but I'm yeah. finding satisfaction and so forth. Yeah. Well, this is one of the ways that I'm managing to stay kind of engaged. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm helping with something, if not now, maybe in the future. Right. Um, so given the way that the shape of the job has changed and in some ways it sounds like you're getting better at using data um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we've used the word pinpointing mm -hmm. uh, problems and, and, and being able to focus and, and address them um, do you feel like there are changes happening that that will uh, uh, persist that will change the way uh, we practice? I, I think I do. Um, I don't necessarily agree with them. I feel, I've heard lots of people mention that telemedicine is just fine and so much better. And mm -hmm. like actually a physical therapist, you said you spoke with one, but Somebody who works at the hospital yesterday, I was on a meeting with her swim team, but she said how they're doing some physical therapy with telehealth. And mm -hmm. I'm so much of a human connection person. I'm, I'm worried that a lot of things are going to get to that point. I know it has somewhat because I have spoke with people, friends that say they just call the nurse for their insurance and describe their symptoms and mm -hmm. go from there. Um, but I guess professionally and personally, I worry that that's going to become more the norm instead of the rare mm -hmm. occurrence. And people are going to say, oh, it worked fine during this you know, pandemic. So mm -hmm. this made everything a lot easier. So let's just keep going that way. And that worries me because I do think as humans and as caregivers, that connection needs to be there. How, how um do you feel the the staffs that you're working with how are they doing and how are they coping i've i've been only working with managers like nurse managers and administrators mm -hmm. and social service directors i haven't had um interaction with the actual i should say the actual the nurses that are one-on-one -on -one with the patients um so i'm not sure the directors of nursing discuss the the, the new obstacle of trying to keep folks engaged while separated, I mean, there's mm -hmm. a whole terminology, and involved. And so their shift has been very different than what they're used to, is um, keeping residents' moods and emotions, you know, stable and, and while still trying to grow and, and active. Mm -hmm. and, We've been, and this is just Sean and I again, we've been sending tacos one night a week over to Valley View for the whole staff. Mm -hmm. And we've great, I mean, it's just fun. It was just something we decided to do. We know the restaurant owner and then those are his staff and he wanted to make sure they knew how, you know, that he's very proud of them for staying around and working too. So we've been doing that once a week. And I get faxes from them because they faxed me their admission orders anyway. But then when they found out it was me, they started faxing thank you for the tacos, which is <laughs> kind of fun. Um, so That's I, telemedicine. Yeah, exactly, I guess. I wish I had the taco, no. though. <laughs> so they, I think Sean, um, I hear most of that from Sean for, for the day-to-day -day basis, which I'm sure he addressed with you guys. That's how yeah, this stuff is about. doing. But yeah. Anyway. Um, now that I think about it, I don't know if we have any um, managerial staff from long-term care facilities uh, in our queue. Uh, Erica, do, Erica says we've recruited a lot of nurses. She, you used, to, where did you teach, Erica? Yes, I taught at Ames Community College for 15 years. 
And so okay. I have just my past students that I've kept in touch with are lining up. So, yeah. so it's I, if there's a if there are some uh, long term. I hope I imagine some of them are working in long term care facilities. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and maybe they're managers too. It would be good to talk to managers too. Absolutely. And uh, Monica had a meeting today. She was going to also reach out to other AHEC directors. Mm -hmm. Say, okay, what, what kind of contacts can we get? Mm -hmm. so, um, have you noticed any shortages of medications? I heard that there's some concern, especially uh, with the albuterol MDIs. Yes, uh, yes, <laughs> there are shortages. And I know in Golden, I don't have a lot to do with the dispensing pharmacy part, but we've had meetings with them as well. Um, certain Combivent, Respimat, inhalers, we're only getting five a day, but we service so many hundreds of facilities. The big push was to stop all nebulizers, um, especially if there was a positive in the building because of the air transmission. But then we also, had the extreme of some facilities stopping all nebulizers even if there is not positive. So again, a little overreaction in the beginning and we're now paying for it because we're trying to get the supplies in that we need as far as the inhalers go and spacers. Right. That's the biggest one I know of as far as the, what I've been told from Omnicare dispensing. And magnesium, actually, there's a little bit going low right now also because of a lot of folks are using it in residents, and then you can get into the whole debate about the two anti-malarial drugs, but <laughs> yeah. that's totally another, another, that's a whole other stockpile of meds. But yeah, magnesium surprised me, but that was something that came up. That they're starting to see that people are using it. Using the magnesium, how? I, I'm, I don't know. There was probably one, one word on the internet that said it helps kind of thing. And folks, a lot of folks are getting it in the hospital, and then folks are starting it in their long-term care residence or whenever on it. It's, and it's being administered orally or Yeah, IV? it's a 400 mag magnesium oxide, 400 milligrams twice a day. Uh -huh. So it's a strange thing, but... It'll keep them regular anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which, wouldn't, which wouldn't hurt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's, that's definitely an odd one that I heard about. Yeah. Have you had any other... Uh, just issues from a pharmacist's point of view, either about supply or changes of routines? Mm, not so much that I heard from our dispensing pharmacies in Golden because it is a closed pharmacy to begin with. It's not mm -hmm. open to the public. Um, they're noticing shortage overall in admissions in long-term care facilities. I do admission reviews for about 30 facilities in the state of Colorado every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mm -hmm. And this Monday when I logged in, there were only three for the buildings I have. And I'm normally at 20 to 30 on a Monday. Mm -hmm. So that trickles all the way down to you know, less prescriptions getting filled at our long-term care pharmacy. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, and just changes. And we also, one thing that has changed is we supply facilities with what we call an Omnicell machine, which is like the Pictus concept. Mm -hmm. um, and we usually we have one a tech person who's in charge of it all in Golden and the state board of pharmacy requires us to do an inventory on their controls and we've asked for you know a month off or two months off because it is all electronically tracked also so if, some, if there is mm -hmm. a discrepancy we usually take care of it right away but so that has been something um, my clinical manager is dealing with is do I send my consultants in to go come Mm -hmm. And facilities are telling us, yes, come in, no, come in. And so that's a regulatory thing that I think is upset, at least the way we run our pharmacy. Uh, they don't want the nurses to be counting them because they're the nurses that are loading them right. and that whole picture of control. So that sounds odd, but it is something that is like we're dealing with from a regulatory standpoint as a pharmacy. It's also complicated. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you have at any of the three facilities you you follow? Uh, do you have any cases of COVID nineteen? Have you had any infections? I do not, I do not yet. I have Valley View in Fort Morgan, Saga Saga Building in Brush, which is Sunset Manor, mm -hmm. and then Grace Point, which is in Greeley. So so far, I have not had any 
I've had tests. I, I know we tested three three at Valley View, but mm -hmm. no positives. So I don't. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. That I'm, I assume Omnicare has in some of their oh, yeah. gazillions of facilities have mm -hmm. cases. Yes, I think we're up to over fifty who have positives. Mm -hmm. um, do you do you get? Are you getting the um, informational and professional support you need? Yes, I I will say that um, Omnicare's parent company is CVS Health. Mm -hmm. And we have, they initiated a weekly call for na national weekly call with all consultant pharmacists, which I really enjoyed because that's not something we're usually involved with. Mm -hmm. And um, our clinical, very clinical manager as far as high up with CVS had some speakers and hearing more about research and what's happening all over the country. I, I go to that meeting more than, you know, checking out the news because I feel that's, that's on target because they're mm -hmm. consultants and pharmacists that are in New York and in LA. And, and so what they're telling me helps. Um, and anything I've needed, yes, the support is there as far as I feel. Mm -hmm. So you feel just professionally, informationally um, secure? I do, I do. We're getting lots of updates and many um, summaries of studies and tips to how to review a chart now with the patient or in the future, what we're going to have to keep in mind because of the post-COVID problems that we're probably going to see organ damage because of the cytokine storm and things that are happening that they're learning about, which I honestly did not think about until they brought it up at our talk. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be something to watch out for even in six months down the line if somebody had it and we start seeing some heart failure or something change that way. Mm -hmm. So I think they're they seem to be, the support I'm getting in the, the forms, I'd want to say like the PDFs and the summaries of what's happening are short, sweet, but very useful. And I do appreciate that a lot because <laughs> you kind of feel like you're out here on your own and you're trudging through the CDC and you're trudging through this and you're reading this and you're reading that. And someone asks a question and you know, you know sometimes my head just spins and I'm like, I don't know the right answer. <laughs> read four different things from four different reliable yeah. sources. <laughs> so I think um, that way I do feel very supported. That's good. Yeah. Um, that's been for me one of the, uh, Sean will probably tell you the same thing, one of the nice things about being a family doctor is that there's always somebody who knows more about, about it than you do. You, you don't ever have to have the final say. So yes. Yeah, that's good. Yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, what else would you like to, is there something else that you would like to, to tell me about or ask about or that you think is important that we haven't covered? Just in general, as somewhat a rural community member, I mean, Fort Morgan's not that rural, but I do think we have, I've noticed a very lax attitude mm -hmm. by my community members. Oh, that was um, a good, good. I, because I do do like I go out grocery shopping for my in-laws and for our house and like when the max the mask recommendations in the CDC came out it was like a Friday night or a Saturday mm -hmm. and I went in shopping that weekend and maybe five percent of people had one and even just yesterday I again did a, did a run for milk and so forth and maybe we're up to 35 percent of people which shocking it, it, it it surprises me. Mm -hmm. um, it's in our little, you know, it's in our Fort Morgan Times, they talk about it and so forth. And then I'm also surprised at employees not having them, not wearing masks, like Safeway and that's really where I've been for groceries. And so that's interesting because to me, that's also telling the customers that, you know, they don't need it either if the employees don't have it. But, and I hear conversations and speak with people and there's a lot of judging going on, which I don't like ever in society. Like last night, I did have a board meeting for my swim team and we're kind of on hold because USA Swimming is on hold. Normally we'd be registering and getting the kids in the water in May, um, but we had this meeting and one of them was an, a fellow board member was talking about Cargill, our meat plant here. And I'm sure you have the same in Greeley going on with lots of positives and, um, but still working and you know, so-and-so's neighbor is positive and he's still getting his car every day to go to Cargill and just, 
judging tones, you know, listening to other people talk and speak without always knowing the whole story is personally always upsets me because I just don't know. But I don't know if that's a lack of education or, you know, just the person who really needs to go to work. So it's it's been interesting to see um, that as far as I do think they're lax. And I also think there's always the cowboy attitude in rural areas. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm out ranching, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. and nothing's you know i'm not going to get a virus even if i come into town once I, i'm not going to get sick kind of i had a friend who went to get some pigs from auction and he was surprised absolutely nobody had a mask and he felt very uncomfortable because people are on top of people and he yeah he came home as soon as he got his pigs i mean it was just an interesting to hear and so things like that are seen i guess that's surprising but i also think part of that independent cowboy attitude is why we like small towns and why we do survive. <laughs> so it's hard, you know, am I critical because people aren't wearing a mask or am I happy they're ready to just take it on? I don't know. <laughs> so. well, you know, remember that, that uh, in this part of the world, we're still just about two generations removed from the people who rode yeah. wagons across the whole country to you know break the planes mm -hmm. um that's the culture yeah yeah and it's interesting because even where i am compared to the other consultants in denver it's a different world yes it really is and i try to explain that and i just have stopped trying to explain it because you have to live here well, that's one reason why we're doing this uh, mm -hmm. with Centennial AHEC, because uh, as I said, you know, uh, rural just tends to be overlooked. Um, or people tend to assume um, that all the places are the same. Mm -hmm. um, and they're not. We know that. Yeah, exactly. I so guess Morton County is now the third in as far as cases per 100,000. Oh, really? Dr. Guzman, yes, Hanson Guzman told us. So we're rapidly rising, which we'll see where that goes. It, it, uh, where, is that, where is that happening? Um, is, it, is it a good deal of it as the beef plant, the beef plant or other nursing homes in, in the... Ebenezer has had, a, has had a rash of positives. Wow. Um, and well, I'm guessing mostly Carville. I'm not really sure because... I've spoke with um, some family providers and they're not checking, you know, not a lot of folks are really checking unless they're very sick, but they're, I'm thinking maybe it is somebody said like 20 something cases from the beef plant. And mm -hmm. so when you look at that per capita of a hundred thousand, yeah. you know, I think we're at a little over a hundred cases right now. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's interesting. Oh. I know there's a question I wanted to ask you uh, before when we were talking about um, how uh, how your job is going and what it's like. Um, ha have you had uh, much contact uh, directly with the physicians? Um, and how is that going and how has that has that changed? Well, Sean's a given. Yes, I have with him he's my valley view med director right, and he sunset. has to listen to you we know that but yeah he has no choice but sunset has a new medical director which is kind of odd timing to bring them in but i am um i spoke with him on the phone and i'm going to go actually meet him in the parking lot basically how they have all those events i can go next tuesday and actually sit down and we're going to sit down six feet across from each other at a table but Mm -hmm. um, I want to meet him again because he's new and Sunset residents, as you know, Mark, are very <laughs> complex and yes. he's coming into a lot of meds and a lot of psychiatric issues and so I didn't feel that even video was, would work. So we'll meet mm -hmm. and visit. So, But he was receptive on the phone when I've talked to him about a few other things with residents. I have not spoken to any of the Greeley Jacks. Um, I just resumed taking care of Grace Point in March, but mm -hmm. I haven't had any communication with those physicians. Mm -hmm. And are there multiple physicians at Grace Point? Yes, yes there are. Yeah, Whereas my other two buildings, there's just one at each. So I'm one director. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Anything else? Not that I can think of. 
This was great. I really appreciate what you mentioned about the rural communities. I think that was great insight. Well, along those lines also, um, like I mentioned, Patrick's graduating from um, Prairie High School, which is, and there's 14 in his class, so it's preschool through 12 in the same building. Mm -hmm. And we live in Fort Morgan, but we, he goes to Prairie. We're about 20 miles from there, which are actually closer than a lot of the people that are in district out there. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. um, what, and again, it's a personal, but I've noticed our seniors are pretty resilient and very positive right now. And I mean, they're different. They seem to be taking it in stride better than the Fort Morgan students I know. And that's just a slight difference in, you know, Fort Morgan graduates, how many, I'm not even sure. Probably definitely over 150, I think, maybe 250. Mm -hmm. So it's, I've been impressed with the Prairie Seniors response. I, and, Patch, and my son in general, him as well, but his friends who I spoke with, they're just like, it's another bump in the road, which I think is, speaks a lot for, I do think that's rural also. And I think that's the, the community and we're just gonna put our head down and work. You know, we've lost some cattle, all right, we're just gonna go take care of this. So it seems to have that is a very positive attitude that these kids have taken on that I feel, I mean, my observation and it's been fun. I mean, not fun. It's, I feel bad, but a lot of them are, we're going to make this work. We're trying to figure out, they just got their caps and gowns, and we're trying to figure out how to take pictures with them six feet apart. But since there's only 14, I think we're just going to get a big old yeah. flatbed trailer and have them zigzagged, or <laughs> we're going to try to do something, because yeah. that's part of their tradition, is fun pictures outside of Prairie, out of the school. Um, yeah. How much is 14 times? You just get a wide angle lens on, which is, it's actually 13. Yeah, because there's one on each end. So 13 right. times, you know, times six. <laughs> I've been working on the oh, right trying lens. to figure out which is the best way to do it, but I've got all these designs. <laughs> you're gonna stay on the ladder, you're gonna stay on this pickup. <laughs> so hopefully we'll get to do that by if, if everything gets released as far as meeting up together. But as again, from a rural perspective, I think in a way we're much more prepared for things like this mm -hmm. mentally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I laughed at one of our friends. We said they're going to survive the apocalypse. They have a little farm and they're chickens and they're the ones that went to pick up the pigs and mm -hmm. you know everything's canned because Bella does her own, you know, and Sean and I are like, we're moving over to your house. Yeah. <laughs> <Much more. laughs> because you guys are all self-sustaining. We've got solar panels to donate. <laughs> <laughs> But there's so many places like that around here and so many families because they might get stuck in a snowstorm and have to live on their own for, I mean, even in this day and age, which I think a lot of people don't get their mind around that that can still happen. Yes. But, I mean, in our short time in Morgan, I've had friends that have been isolated in their house for a couple of days mm -hmm. because of snow and ice. And it's, it's a different breed. <laughs> You're right. Yes, it is. Yeah. All right. Okay, thank you so much, Tamara Thompson, uh, Farm D, and um, give my regards to to uh, Sean and and to your in laws, and and um, it's been yeah. a pleasure. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for asking. It was nice for me to reflect personally because I I was just telling my son before I came in and sat down. I'm like, I don't even know how I really feel because I haven't had the chance, or not even the chance, but the reason to truly reflect on all of it. So thank you for that, that opportunity. Well, we all know that uh, talking and having somebody listen to you is in itself therapeutic. Mm -hmm. So um, you betcha it's a pleasure and, and um, I, learned, I learned a lot. So thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely, yeah, thank you. Yeah.